What's up everybody, it's your dubbing boy Daniel. Do you guys know that I also dabble on fashion history while maintaining my art niche? No, I'm just a fashion history enthusiast, I'm not a fashion historian. Well, I wish I could be one. Apparently, I kinda noticed that starting from the 1500s, we always have big hairs. It's not just you. Every 80s or 70s, there'll be a certain point when women have big, puffy hairstyles. Sorry man, but this video will only target women's historical hairstyles. So anyways, let me show my point to you. In the 1580s, women have this big, round hairstyle. If you have seen Queen Elizabeth I, you clearly know what I am talking about. So, from the previous decades, they kinda have this smooth, neat hairstyle, but as time goes by, their hair is literally inflating like a balloon. Also, a quick note, mostly and generally speaking, women are required to wear a cap Actin, it's required, but I'll be only drawing their hairstyles so I have to take off their caps, sadly, to only give you my viewers a better view of their hair. Fast forward a hundred years later, before the 1680s, women have their crown tied up as a bun or coiled around their head as braids, meanwhile they have strands on the side of their face cut shorter than curled, but as the 1680s approach, women begin putting their side curls higher up here. Then soon it evolved into this hairstyle. Before the 1780s, ladies will powder their hair and they will look like old women. When I was new to the 1700s fashion, I thought every woman in all portraitures are old. Like, anyways, in the 1760s, women would mostly add rolls to their hair, you know, the George Washington type of hair. Then soon, in the 1770s, the poof was invented. This hairstyle is mostly associated with the infamous queen, Mary Antoinette. It's possibly one of the most iconic hairstyles in history, all powdered, gigantic, and it literally poofed. Hence the name, La Pouf. However, this hairstyle quickly fell out of fashion because in the 1780s, women will have this style called coiffe à l'enfant. It's when things deflate down a little bit, with a less powdery look. Now in the 1880s, they don't have big hair, but the title of this video refers to the 70s and 80s. So if the 1880s failed to comply, how about the 1870s? Ah yes, these people did go crazy with their hair. Before the 1870s, it's basically the same story from the past centuries. They started off with a modest hairstyle that has a middle parting and a low bun until the ladies went boom. By the way, the 1870s have a lot of varieties of hairstyles. I will be drawing this exact hairstyle from the period. You know it's funny. As far as I've heard, women back then couldn't put their hair down, but I've been seeing a lot of fashion plates from the Victorian era where ladies have half of their hair down. At least curled. Can someone please explain and enlighten me in the comment section, please? Thanks. Heading to the most iconic 80s for them all. Well, only for the 21st century's perspective. The 1980s. You know, it's a time when rock and roll was a thing and metal music was at its peak. If you ask a person from the 21st century their thoughts in the 80s, one of the things they'll perceive is big curly hair. It was a thing. P.S. Not everyone in the 80s has big hair. Take Princess Diana as an example. Or my mom. Now that we all have discussed about the 70s or 80s having big hairstyles, you can now go walk around on the park and assume that in the 2070 or 2080, we'll have big hairs again. Or maybe the 2000s will be a revolutionizing century where we won't take any inspiration from past centuries fashion and hairstyles. Hmm, who knows? If you like this video, then prove it by smashing that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and turn on that notif bell. Thanks for watching.